Hey everyone, Sam McKay from Enterprise DNA here. Okay, today I'm going to show you something really interesting, really interesting about how the uh, cumulative total formulas or, or pattern, if you like, works when you put it in a very interesting context. Now, this actually, this, uh, this scenario came from a question in the Enterprise DNA support forum. And that uh, you can go have a look there at forum.enterprisedna.co. But what, what was asked was, uh, someone wanted to showcase cumulatively. They wanted to showcase cumulatively, uh, but they wanted to show it via the month name. They didn't actually want to showcase it, say, month and year or by the particular date. They wanted to do the month name. And where this runs into a bit of trouble is, is, is if the dates, if the date selection you have actually goes over, it goes over an entire year. So you might have, say, January to, say, September the next year. So you might have, say, 15 to 20 months in there. Uh, then the, the, the standard cumulative total pattern does not work and we need to revise it. We need to revise the formula that we actually want to use. So let's have a quick look at it. Let's have a quick look at this formula now. I've, I've actually showcased this many times, so uh, I'm not going to go through it in detail, but basically what it does is it, it calculates up a amount. In this case, we're just looking at very generic sales. It's going to count up sales within the range that is selected. So if you look at all selected here, that basically uh, captures a context of, of whatever range is selected within this particular report. And as you can see here in this uh, date slicer, we are currently between the 1st of um, the first of February and the 9th uh, of, the sorry, we're the 2nd of February and the 20th of September. So basically what that is showing, so you see here in, in this current context month year, we're actually looking at all the months and the total sales and then we're looking at the cumulative sales and it works fine, which is great, right? S but check this out, check out what happens, check out what happens if we start extending this a little bit further. So I'm going to just slowly extend this and you'll see here that this cumulative sales is, is fine, it works absolutely fine and it is accumulating up these particular months as we go. But I'm gonna I'm gonna drag it out into the next year and see. Let's have a look at what happens to this formula. What it does is it does accumulate. It does accumulate for us, which is good, right? But it starts bringing the accumulation into the new months. So January becomes this quite odd number, but it's really just a continuation of um, all of these months you know, as we go forward. So it's doing its job, but it's just in the current context getting a little bit confused and it's not actually giving us the result that we particularly may want. What we may actually want here is we might actually just want an updated cumulative total from January to December, regardless of what, um, so, you know, well, the selection does matter, but we actually want it to always start with the January number and then accumulate from there. But it, what what is doing it in, inside it here currently is it's starting from the January number, going all the way to December, and then jumping back to January again, accumulating from December, and so on and so forth. If I just drag this out again, you'll see that this extends down even lower um, as we go. And then when you actually drag it out quite far, you can start getting a little bit confused here because uh, you'll see here that this is all 23 million and that's basically the total and it's just sort of going round and round and round and round in circles um, for every single month, uh, for every single year. Okay, so the question in the forum was, well, how do you actually just continue to get a cumulative total just like it was one selected only one particular year, right? So it's always going to be this cumulative total. Very, very interesting scenario and a really uh, good le learning opportunity around advanced tax formulas. So I'm gonna bring in the result and we can see that it actually works and I'll showcase why it actually works. So um, you'll see here that it actually is always accumulating exactly like this one is now, but check out what happens when I actually extend this. It always accumulates from January. It doesn't do this weird thing that the cumulative sales pattern um, does, okay? And even though you know the totals are the same, et cetera, et cetera, um, this is going to be, the worst of what was required in that particular example, um, and it's producing you know, a result that is actually logical versus this doesn't, doesn't really make much sense from a visualization point of view. Okay, so how did we work it out? Okay, so I used a couple of um, 
variables variables here I used a few variables so basically what I did what I did was uh, I didn't I didn't use the pattern right so just clear that from your mind I, I recreated a new pattern that gave us the answer that we that we needed for this particular scenario now first of all I needed to go and create the range the date range myself right and what I did for that is I created a min date and I also created a max date and I uh, made that calculation by using the all selected statement right and from here I was then able to move to the date range so I did create a date range but I created it in a slightly different way than what we did uh, in a slightly more like manual way than we did in the um, in the cumulative total pattern and then what I did then what I did was I needed to create a table I needed to basically create I needed to recreate this part of the table where I had the month name and the total sales right but I only wanted to calculate it within within a, um, this particular date range right and so what I was able to do is I was able to using summarize so let's have a look at this part of the formula first using summarize I was then able to narrow that date range right and then think of this table this table is month name which is going to be exactly this one down here and then we're going to have a sales column which is basically total sales so just think we've we've recreated this part but then what I also did right I also brought in the month number so what uh, I, I dragged this number from the month from the dates uh, table and so this just imagine virtually there's this brand new column which is saying um, 12345 down to 12 for December and then from that number and this is how this is how I was able to create this is how I was able to create a cumulative total was that um, for every single so if you think about for every single row in this particular um, table what we are doing is we are evaluating uh, is the month number less than or equal to the max month of year okay so what the max so, so for every single row here what this is doing is it is calculating what the current month number is right so say for instance we're in May it is evaluating that as five but then what this is doing inside of filter is we are iterating through this table for every single row and so we can change the shape of this table uh, by iterating through it and then saying okay well is any of these numbers less than or equal to five in this particular case and if it is maintain that table and then at the end we count up the sales amount and that's how once we get to the 11th rows here say in November this will evaluate to 11 we'll iterate through this entire table and evaluate 11 of um, the months to be less than or equal to the current month in the context 11 and then we will go and count up the sales which is being represented by this particular column here inside of the summarized table and that's how we do it that's how we do it so look there, there is a little bit to that right there's a little bit to this format it's obviously not that that simple but there's so many amazing and really great techniques just to even take out of this one example and, that, and that's really what i wanted to showcase it you know first of all we we've got a pattern that doesn't work in a, in a particular context right all selected have it has its nuances so we had to work out a way around it and then uh what i've showcased here is many things right first of all summarize you can create virtual tables which i just love using these days it's just so many applications and then we were able to uh, create or within some x we were able to be able to filter dynamically this virtual table right and, and produce different results at each different row and then uh, even within these the some x formula we were able to um, create calculations based on these virtual table columns which is again seriously seriously cool Okay, so I'm going to round things off there because that was there was a little bit to that, and, and certainly you know there's a lot to learn here. So so certainly review this a couple of times if you really want to get your head in the game around you know how you actually work this. But if you can, I'm telling you there's there's so many applications for for t for these sort of techniques to be applied in many 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 scenarios, um, and more advanced formulas or more advanced scenarios or analysis scenarios in Power BI. Okay, all the best. Take care. Hopefully you can um, implement some of these techniques uh, into your own models. Talk to you soon.